Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel and to my kitchen. So today I want to make some jamu juice and for those of you who haven't heard of jamu juice, it is native to Indonesia where it's largely considered medicinal. There are many different ways to make jamu juice, but the most common combine ginger and turmeric for a profoundly anti-inflammatory effect. Now guys, jamu juice is really easy to make and it is delicious. It has a bright orange color because of the turmeric. It's got a little bit of honey for some sweetness and a little bit of citrus to get some acidic flavor into the juice. And I think you're really gonna like it. Now, as I said, the two main ingredients are ginger and turmeric. So I'm gonna be using whole ginger root. This is available in the grocery store in the produce section. And it seems to be a more recent phenomenon that you can get turmeric root, which looks a lot like ginger, except for that it usually comes in smaller chunks and it's bright orange. So I'm gonna be using gloves because this stains everything, guys. So turmeric and ginger both have profound anti-inflammatory effects. Now I've done videos on each one of these rhizomes separately. So the most widely known active anti-inflammatory compound in turmeric is the curcumin. Now I had said back when I did a video on turmeric supplements that I actually prefer to take a supplement with the whole rhizome instead of just curcumin. I suspect there are other components in this rhizome besides just the curcumin that somehow work to enhance the curcumin. I don't know. I find that when it comes to supplements, I do better with the whole turmeric. So there's one interesting article that I did not mention, nor did I link in my video on turmeric. It was published in 2017 in the Journal of Cellular Physiology, and it found that the curcumin that's in turmeric has such a profound effect on immune cells that it can actually decrease the severity of immune related diseases. And by that, I mean autoimmune disease and other such. Now guys, I am not giving any individual medical advice on this channel and nothing that I say should substitute for the advice of your own practitioner. And by the way, I'm not, I would never recommend any way that you cease any medication you're on for an immune disease and substitute it with turmeric juice. But our general overall health is a large big picture item and it comprises many different choices, our dietary choices, our lifestyle choices, a few things that we don't really have any say about like the genetics that we bring to the table, but even those we can impact with some of our other choices. So, so I also did a video a while back on ginger and its benefits. And in that video, I linked in the description box several different scientific articles. Uh, one that I did not have on there was an article that was published in the Journal of Food Chemistry that discusses all the different benefits of the ginger roll, as well as something called 6-shogol, which is a compound in ginger, and how they particularly have a profound impact on neuroinflammation, so inflammation of the brain and spinal cord. So I'm going to link that below. And yeah. so let's get started and make some jamu juice. I think you guys are really going to like it. So to get started making our jamu juice, I've just got these six simple ingredients. I'm going to use about a tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm gonna use a couple tablespoons of honey. I use raw organic honey. I do use a little bit of black pepper. I did a video a while back about turmeric and its anti-inflammatory benefits, but turmeric is very poorly absorbed and it becomes much more easily absorbed when it's mixed with black pepper. So we're gonna put a little black pepper, not enough that you're going to taste anything harsh in this juice. Um, I use coconut water. You can use plain water um, for the base of this juice. I like that the coconut water adds some electrolyte. It will add a little something sweet, guys, because there is some natural sugar in the coconut water. I don't worry about it. And then, of course, I've got turmeric root and ginger root that we're going to measure out. So uh, the turmeric root is orange, and turmeric is what gives curry powders their orange or deep yellow color. Turmeric will stain like everything. So once I start working with it, I'm going to put on some gloves because I'm going to peel off the skin. Uh, so I have a pair of gloves here, obviously a knife and cutting board. In the way of other equipment, I like to get a kitchen scale. Now you can proportion this uh, using volume measures like cups or proportions of cups, but I think that weight is a better way to measure the relative uh, turmeric and ginger root. I'll also need a saucepan because we're going to simmer this and then some kind of a way to strain our juice because it's going to be a little particulate. So this is a very fine mesh sieve uh, insert so it sits right inside, actually it goes this way, sits right inside that funnel and I can strain the juice in any particulate matter. This is another kind of uh, device that you might use where it looks like a little strainer that inserts into the 
whole of that funnel, and that's another way to strain the juice. But this juice so when it comes to proportions, it's about one to four or one to five. This isn't a real exact thing, but if you use like one ounce of ginger, you're going to use around four and a half, five ounces of the turmeric. So I like to use, like I said, a kitchen scale for that. I'm going to put that. my gloves on. And I'm just going to start to peel, for lack of a better word, our roots. So I don't really get in there with a peeler. You can do this any way you like. I find it's easy just to kind of cut a border around and get rid of the skin. You don't have to get rid of all of it. In fact, some people make this juice just by scrubbing uh, the root down and they use the skin. So if you prefer to do that, you won't have to even go through the work of peeling it. I prefer to take most of the skin off because we prefer our Jamo juice to be a little more on the smooth side. So I'm just going to roughly get the skin off of several pieces of my turmeric root and then my ginger root. Then we'll weigh them and we'll move on to the next step. Now for those of you who have ever worked with uh, turmeric in its usual form, which is the powder, you buy it in the spice section of the grocery store, you'd be very surprised working with fresh turmeric what a delightful scent it has. It smells really good in here right now, guys. Um, it actually smells kind of sweet. Uh, it doesn't taste sweet, but it has just a, a delightful aroma. So now I've got four and a half ounces of turmeric, so you can see that pretty much filled up my ramekin. And we're gonna go ahead and start on the ginger. Now for the ginger, obviously it's gonna be a lot less because as I said, the proportion is about one to four, even one to five. So I just kind of roughly get the skin off. I don't worry too much about <clears throat> little pieces in between. But if you, if you don't like that or you're not going to like the particulate feel of it, you can pretty easily get that stuff out of there. Just take that. So I'm going to shoot for about three quarters of an ounce to one ounce of ginger. I would caution you about using too much ginger. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, I love ginger. I love the flavor and the aroma of ginger. But raw ginger is actually quite hot, and uh, it will make your juice um, quite spicy, much more so than the little bit of black pepper we're going to be using. So just be very careful with uh, the quantity of ginger. I'm going to zero my scale again and see how much ginger. I've just added 0.8. That's pretty good. All right, we're going to stick with 0.8. So I said somewhere between 0.75 and 1. Uh, 0.8 sounds good. Now it's saying 0.9. So I'm just going to get ready to juice my lemon. I'm going to do that off camera. But I'm going to cut this up right now because the first thing I'm going to do, guys, off camera is wash my cutting board because that turmeric uh, will stain and my cutting board will be yellow forever. So the first thing I'm going to do now is wash my cutting board. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back, guys. Here I've got the blender that I had so conveniently forgotten to tell you that you need. Small, tiny, unimportant piece of equipment. So uh, what we're going to do is put the turmeric and the ginger into the blender along with the four cups of, in my case, coconut water and yours, maybe plain water, up to you. So the rule of thumb with black pepper is about an eighth of a teaspoon ground, but I use whole peppercorn, so it's probably closer to a teaspoon. Again, this isn't really going to make this juice hot. We're using the pepper so that we can absorb uh, the turmeric and reap the anti-inflammatory benefits instead of just making expensive juice that we can't absorb. Okay, so this is going to go onto the blender. The lemon juice and the honey come later, so I'm just going to blend the water the black peppercorns and the ginger root and turmeric root. I'm gonna do that off camera just because it is so noisy. And then I'll see you back in a second. Okay, so guys, I'm back. I did a little bit of cleaning up off camera, but I've got my Jammu mixture in here. And I'm just gonna pour that all into a saucepan. Guys, I use something with a nonstick coating, not because this is likely to stick, but just because it does discolor things so easily, and I find with the nonstick coating, everything just comes right off. And then this is going to go onto the stove. And what I'm going to do is bring this to a boil, and then I'm just going to simmer it for about 20 minutes. So I'm going to try to give you a shot of what it looks like. It's just a very gentle boil that I let go for 20 minutes. 
Okay, so I let my jamu juice come to a boil. I watched it carefully because I want to turn it down as soon as it boils. I don't want it to boil hard. I'm just going to turn it down to try to give you a good look at that. It's just a nice slow simmer where I see some bubbles coming up. And I'm going to set a timer now for 20 minutes. Okay guys, I'm back. So the Jamma Juice has simmered on the stove for 20 minutes. I do take it off and let it rest just a few minutes. You can see it's still steamy, but it's no longer simmering or boiling. Um, there are antioxidants in the lemon juice and there are good beneficial organisms in the honey. And I don't want those to go into the boiling juice, okay? I don't want to kill those organisms or deactivate any antioxidants. So I'm going to use a tablespoon of my lemon juice. And I add two tablespoons of my raw honey. I get this raw honey from Vitacost. What's really good is if you can get honey that's locally sourced near you. And I'm just going to give that a stir because I do want the honey to completely dissolve. And now comes the fun part. So I go ahead and strain this. I'm going to use the strainer that I showed before with the stainless steel insert. Uh, this has the benefit that it won't stain. It also won't filter quite as uh, finely as the mesh that I showed at the beginning. Once you let this sit in the fridge for a while, it will separate again. You're never going to get all of the particulate matter out of it, so you will need to shake it uh, so that you get it back to a good consistency you want before you drink it. I don't keep this for over a week in the fridge, guys, because it's not pasteurized or anything like that. One week is the max around this house. We usually try to use it in about four days. Okay, and so I'm gonna to try to do this and give you a view. And sometimes you have to wait a bit. Sometimes you have to move some of the particulate matter out of the way because it's blocking the holes in that strainer. So I'll often gently give it a stir while it's inside the funnel. Now, the finer the sieve, the more patience this is going to take, but I personally like that. We prefer our juice smoother and less particulate, so this is worth the wait. If the particulate matter doesn't bother you, you could actually go ahead and drink it without straining it. Now, you'll see that when the amount that you put in the funnel is done, you've got a little particulate matter in there, so you definitely want to get rid of that. And I'm going to fill my funnel again. Do give what's left in the saucepan a nice stir in case anything is separated. What you want to do is make sure you're just agitating it a bit in the funnel to keep the holes clear. And this does take some patience, guys. Okay, guys, so I finished up off camera. I've got my jamu juice now strained into the jars. This, these jars are going to sit until they're cooled down completely, and then I'm going to put them in the fridge and chill. And then a little while later this afternoon, we're going to have some delicious jamu juice. All right, guys, I've got my fresh jamu juice. It's been chilling in the refrigerator for several hours. Guys, I like this best when it's really chilled. Obviously, I put it over ice. Uh, I don't think there's any reason that you can't drink this warm if that's your preference. Uh, but I do find that after it's had time to chill in the refrigerator, the flavors, particularly of the honey, that little bit of honey flavor really develops, and the citrus from that lemon, the acidity. And I think that makes a big difference in this juice. So... I hope that you'll try this, guys. It really is delicious. And if you have any recipes of your own or you've had any experience with jamu juice, I hope you'll put your own renditions in the comment box and let me know how you like it. Until next time, be well.